I want to give you a quick intro uh, to the next video or two. Yesterday I had the tremendous opportunity to hang out with Rusty from Herding Bees with Rusty and Mike. Uh, we went and did actually two cutouts in an old house and they were it was a tremendous experience. And Rusty and his wife, Christy, were both there. And I learned a tremendous amount from him. A lot of things, a lot of ways uh, to uh, do cutouts in order to prevent a lot of problems. He just gave me some really great advice. So this first video in particular is gonna be a little lengthy. I just couldn't cut out a lot of the great content that I had um, as I worked with Rusty yesterday. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Since the video is so long, let's get started. Here we go. Good morning guys, it's February 29th. This is Rusty uh, with Herding bees with Rusty and Mike, right, Rusty? That's right, yep. Ran can be ranch. I heard you see in the background the sign, Ran can be ranch. He's got a bunch of bees over this way. We're about to go out and do a removal out way out in the country. Rusty's kind of the removal expert here, <laughs> and I'm going to learn from him today. This might be a stretch. And we'll see how it goes. We're going to head that way now. All right. Well, let's hit the road, Rusty. Let's roll, brother. All right. All right, looks like we're turning in here. Location where the hives are on this old house here. Let's see what we got. Let's be it over there. No, oh, wait, it's over here, I think, actually. The house is right over here. I like it. Let's go see what we got, man. It's the old one. Yeah, it is. Where they, they are on this thing. <coughs> ah, we found them. Up there. So show we found them. Yes, sir. Let's see how hot they are. Wakey, wakey, got, some. got some up there. There you go. Oh, yeah. It's like a good size hive, doesn't it, Rusty? Well, considering the hot spot is just on the brood, there's no telling how much comb and honeycomb is not covered. I can see comb down in a gap here just above the window all the way to the ceiling. So that right. one's fairly large. Let's, Let's go look at the other one. one. Wax that one looks like uh, a good size one. That though. one's bigger. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So that's wow. two good sized colonies. This is going to be high adventure, Bruce. I what see. You got me that one goes to? way on up there. Yeah, I mean, that's. That goes. I can still. I can see comb through the gaps in the <laughs> wood pretty high. So there's probably a ton of honeycomb up high. Ah, that's going to be fine. This will be outstanding. I'm glad I brought the chainsaw and the. Oh, that's what we're going to do first. It's Christy. Hey. Trusty's wife, Christy, she's going to help us out too. Good deal, man. Yes, sir. I guess let's get after it. They booming. That's that's gonna stop them. This is from going any higher. Be from the inside, from his heat it's sensor. It's dark in here, but we can light it up. Whatever you think, man. Inside or outside, whatever's easiest. Inside, probably gonna be easier. Mm, that's nice. And these are right down here by the side, kind of, aren't they? They're right there on this right side of that window. Pretty much on the way to the ceiling. Wow. The same pest you deal with in your bee yard, these bees deal with obviously out here in nature. So everywhere one of these boards laps is an access point for those pests. And you can see right here, this is all remnants of wax moth larva where they have tried to get in and lay eggs inside the colony but the bees have held them off all the way up there too yeah huh? they're just about on every lap all the way way high up there wow so the bees keep them from getting in there well i understand russ these bees have been here for there have been bees in this wall in these walls for many many years i've heard well, even up to like decades like, absolutely like maybe 30 years or more yeah they're probably obviously not the same bees i'm sure they swarmed off and died out but it's a ready-made apartment look at the outside of that wood how stained yeah. it is from bees crawling up and down. Yeah, that's crazy. On it and propolis and Unreal. honey and. Are we gonna get set up here and see if we can get you know, to it? You know what I don't see though, which is a good sign? What's that? 
you don't see a lot of black mildew from where it looks like a colony has died out and small hive beetles have yep. got in it because that'll typically mildew on the outside. Yep. Yeah. All right, man. Okay, look how dark that, can you see how dark yeah, that cone is? It's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool, man. Cutting the path so we can get in there. Gotta get started. Start going. Set up here. We cleared a little path through here. We're gonna go back to the top hide first. Alright, rest is about to do. Work is magic. Go. Uh, <laughs> smoker? Yeah, we're gonna have to do a smoke on it. Can we get this? Yeah, we got them stirred up a little now. That's okay, I kind of expected that. So, a little feisty, Rusty? Yeah, that a bit feisty. You got your smoker? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Over here in the shade, it's cool. These girls, I'm sure, are on constant alert because of the condition of their home. Yeah. So that'll be a little hot until we get these numbers down. But the best of conditions to be doing them naked like I normally would. Ooh, boy. Got the extension ladder. Now we can get all the way to the top. <laughs> they're not mean, they're defensive, right? Yeah, they're not aggressive, they're just defending home. Less than ideal circumstances of duty. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit chilly today. It's convenient, I mean, if I'm doing this one, you're going to get the door <laughs> back and warm up and calm down a little bit. That's, That's right. That's a good plan. Hey, I'm planning it that way. That's a good plan. Get you up on the ladder up there and right. do it when it's cool still. Rusty over there getting those bees. What happened about these girls before they had a chance to make a ton of honey? No doubt. That would be messy. Hello. 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 I promise you up here, the way I've been hurting them north. There's a time. Man, this is going to be packed on the beach. Yeah. Wrong comb there. We got some bigger fruit there. Strong food. When I started doing this, it took me about three times as long. It's okay to vacuum the queen, right? I don't mind. Yeah, I still try not to vacuum the queen, but what I've learned, that's why I call what I do herding bees, is you can kind of control what the queen does. You can force her. She's a lot smarter than these bees. She's not going to try to protect the colony and hang out here, out here in the light. So if you do it right, you herd her to an easily... Uh, get her in a corner, so to speak. Basically, that's what you're doing, is getting her in a corner. 
this is a fairly simple job. They're going to go up here and stop. And I don't think she can get away with this, but depending on the construction, the structure you're working on, you kind of got to pay attention and make sure you're hurting her to somewhere you're going to be able to get to it later on. But you can stop it, sir. Notoriously challenging because you get up and run all the way to the rig bend of the house along the, Absolutely. Along the plywood. You can't get to the man. Try not to do a ton of smoke depending on how the house is built. That kind of way. This is one of those boards. Pollen right there. Are you filming too? Pollen right there and on this side. Look at all this propolis they built up over the years. Seal off their hive between the siding. Pretty cool. Yes. That's how long it is right here. Pretty close to six feet, ain't it? A little over five, five, three. Beautiful colony. Yeah. Got width, yeah. boys. It's probably, how wide is it? Probably 16. Yeah. 16 Eight, yeah, 16 inches wide. So it's 16 by 63 inches. These will be true rough cut two by fours, so it's four inches deep, not, not three, three and, and a half or whatever we lucky to get from the yeah. timber companies to lumber companies today. We got brood. Let's start with this assembly part. A little bit of cat tunny up at the top there. Nice the whole deal there. Let's start cutting the comb out. You saw this comb in the bottom is just there's nothing going on in it right now, so he's just gonna cut that out and drop it down here in his old comb bin. Comb, but that's the valuable comb with the brood in it. That is tough stuff right there. Look at that. Isn't that amazing. Look at that. Wow, look at that. That's so awesome. Look at that. What's that? A foot wide? Pretty close to a foot wide, that piece of comb right there. Yeah, <laughs> that is tough, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, it's not full of honey and weighs 30 pounds. No doubt. It's going to make it easier. That thing, a little old hand on it. It's got to be 8 or 10 inches by 2 feet, probably. how beneath the wax here beneath the comb how they propolized every corner every crack sealed in a lot better than any cock would ever do probably <laughs> they yep. rusted probably so right absolutely absolutely so over here we got a lot of drones over here on the side drone uh cells regular brood over there interesting that pattern drones over here more well, all of this right here is open brood. Yeah. Has it got eggs and larvae in it? Yeah. Yes, She's filled that up. Have an empty frame on that frame. The, uh, some of this is what I see when I remove these feral colonies. You know, you don't see the same laying patterns quite often that you see in your hives at home because multiple, multiple, multiple generations have been hatching here and the queen has refused some of these cells. Makes sense. So I find spots in the brood pattern is simply because the cells, she's not happy with them. Now these are pretty, that's a pretty solid brood pattern though. For that's a, a tight brood pattern for, for a feral colony, yeah. especially, right? It is. This is, this is empty. Okay. I'm going to cheat high and then I'll let Christy trim it to fit. Okay. Is your knife? That sounds good. I'm going to come up here. Okay. <laughs> just trying not to, there's open brood in all the cells up there. Just trying not to, to limit the destruction of open brood up there. Smart move. Smart move by a pro. The back side too, both sides.
Oh yeah. Larva in there. You're a brood pattern. Boy, if we can get that queen rust, you're gonna be in good shape. Come on, get her. Let me see your camera. Got her? Yeah, I got her. Queen? No. Brood pattern, all this open larva right here. Next piece I'm cutting out. This amazing getting rusty? It is. It's totally amazing. I tell people all the time that if you don't believe in God, you don't know that there's a supreme creator. Honeybees should remove all doubt. Absolutely. There's no way that what they do is simple or coincidence or happenstance. The design of these colonies definitely took some supreme being uh, give them the abilities and things that they do. Just the perfect hexagonal shape of the cells and the efficiency of everything and all that brood right there. I mean, Absolutely no doubt. Take this one, you know. We always worry about the queen. Well, you know it as well as I, Bruce, that any of these bees, these female bees, can lay eggs. They can all lay eggs. Yeah. But they're not fertilized. That's right. So why then would they need to lay eggs? Well, if they lose their queen, that's God's last ditch genetic salvation plan for this colony because those workers will lay drones which will then go out and mate with the queen and continue the genetics of this colony. While this colony would be totally doomed, the genetics would survive. So that's not just by chance. No, none of it is. Yeah. What you doing, Christy? Fit into this, fit this frame? Fitting into the frame. Rubber bands to hold it in, right? Rubber bands to hold it in. So I haven't done a lot of removals, but <laughs> I've watched a lot of videos and I've done a couple, I've done a few, and it's amazing how the bees will take this comb right here and just attach it to the frame within just a very few days. And uh, another thing that's real important when you're doing this is you gotta make sure the cells are oriented in the same direction they were up in the hive because the cells are tilted slightly vertically. So you watch what she's doing, she was real careful to lay it in there just the same way that it was handed down to her. Um, so she knew that it was oriented properly. You can flip it upside down or sideways, it's just, it just makes it no good, it renders it no good. Uh, it's amazing, we were just talking about nature up there. The cells are perfectly hexagonal in shape and perfectly efficient, very lightweight, but they're also tilted slightly forward, upward. Um, I guess so when they place things like pollen and honey in there, or even I guess the baby bees, they just don't, I don't know, it just kind of helps keep them in the, in the cell, I guess. Some reason for it. Reason for everything. There's nothing by accident with bees. Look right over here, right there. That's mostly drone comb. Probably gonna trash that. They'll make more drones if they need to and it'll decrease the number of mouths to feed. But there's a wonderful brood pattern up there. You can see right above the knife. This queen is doing a great job. It's obviously this is a strong hive. The strong genetics have been out here for so long. I'm near the top. What'd you say, Rusty, about the queen? What's that? Normally, I'd run her to the top and catch her up here. Yeah. I think what I'm going to try to do is work them around back down behind it. I always try to leave at least one piece of brood comb for them to hide behind. Yeah. For her to hide behind. Uh -huh. so I'm going to slowly work her around the corner and work her back down so we don't have to reach in this far corner up here to get her. That makes a lot of sense to me. Anyway, I don't think. As long as she doesn't run up under here. Yeah, it, well, they propel us behind every one of these boards. Oh, There's really? No way. Right down here, she oh, could. Oh, yeah, they're sealed off. Unless she came all the way around here, yeah. then, which she probably wouldn't do that. Fine, because I haven't been inside to see if there's a knot on it either. True. If there is, they probably propelize it as well. Look at that drone. Look at that brief pattern. That's almost a full frame right there. Yeah, we're going to fill the box. Awesome. Man, look at that brew pattern right there. 
Uh, that's, that's just like a brand new queen, just starting to lay. Yeah, she's, she's got her, she's got it figured out. Breeding up, as they say, right? Yeah. Any doubt spring is coming in Lower Alabama? Absolutely. Piece of stone, Bruce. She's already been back. And all the cells that are open and hatched, she's got she's eggs. She's laid back in it. She's laying up towards the top of the hive, then, isn't she? Yeah. Which is, un you know, she'll probably work her way down, trying to stay where it's warm, too, probably, right? Yep. She's already been back and covered. Look at that. All that larvae in there. 24 7. Yes, sir. Uh, so, this is why Rusty names this channel Herding Bees with Rusty and Mike. Get them all herded up in that corner, but what'd you say about that, Rusty? You really yeah. say herding bees? You're more than herding doing? bees, but you're really only herding one bee. That's the queen, right? You're herding the queen. She's trying to find that queen. That's the goal. Get her out of danger, A, from all the ruckus removal. Put her where we can find her. Yeah. Kind of let her. I say, Rusty's a pro. Make it, make it think it's her idea. Yeah. Not a bad plan. All those bees are up in that corner. She could be right up there. Probably is. I suspect she is at the moment. They're all kind of clustered up there. So we're kind of getting down here to the end. Rusty, tell me what your plan is here with the. You say you're going to try and move them where? I'm trying to make the queen come around and get in behind this last piece of cone um, and take this top corner away from them if I can for now. I think that's her best. Avenue of approach based on where we are right now. Yeah, it'd be easier to see her right there, won't it? Yeah, it'd be easier to get my hands on her. Oh, I got some honey right there. Not much, though. Just a little bit. Alright, Russell, tell me what you're doing here with this white bin. I'm gonna scoop these this big cluster of bees off instead of just really nearly sticking the back nozzle in it. Now they'll get down in this white bin and spread out for me. And if the queen is in there, I'll lay eyes on her and be able to clip her pretty easily. If not, I'll just vacuum them up. I'm getting near the end here and not a lot of places for the bees to hide. They're gonna cluster on top of one another. I'm not worried about vacuuming the queen. The vacuum's not going to hurt her. Look who's back. Here him. What's up? Big, that big spider. The vacuum is not going to hurt her, but it shouldn't hurt her, but there's always that risk. I'd rather have her in a clip where I know exactly where she is. Okay, I don't see her. This all is cluster right down here at the bottom. That's where she is. That's what we were trying to do. Yep. <laughs> trying to make her go around that corner. Getting right? that cluster from the bottom. Makes sense that she might be in there. Maybe up in there somewhere. They're all running up behind. possible you got her already. What's that? It's possible you got her already, I oh, guess. Oh yeah, it's absolutely possible we already got her, but they kind I of... don't think we do.
I know. Catch the capture. I got it. All right. Got I, got it? I, got, I got her. Close it well, I thought I was recording it. She was right over here. Well, we got her. She's in there. She was good at playing hide and go see. If you look in there, you can see the big golden tail right there at the top. It's a real pretty queen, real big queen. Obviously, an awesome queen with awesome hive, awesome genetics. So now we're just going to hurry up and get the rest of these bees sucked up and move on to the next one. Good job, man. Hurting bees. That's right. It's a swarm. You know why we always say that for all our videos? Uh, Tell me the truth. Anybody's ever called you about bees in their house or yes. something? They all say, I got a swarm. I got a swarm. Bees. Yes, they do. You're a colony living in your house. It's not That's right. That's right. Brand new little bees hatching out. See them coming out. So they really need to. There's some brand new baby bees right there. Yep. Yeah. Life renewing. that to close them in. Yep, this will still allow them to vent. Use the feeder. Uh -huh. uh, so put some feeders in some of that yard and uh, I could only get eight frames in. Oh really? How many are supposed to have? I supposed to be supposed to put nine in there. Uh, I don't know. Watch that behind you. I'm going to put the queen in there rubber band her in. not open this clip when I'm doing it. No, let's not, let's not do that. Done that before. That's not fun. I'll just stay in there suspended like that. Oh yeah. I've done that before. There we go. Okay. Alright, tell me what you're doing here. Alright, so we've got the back box off now. We've got all their cones and the feeder um, in this bottom box. I'm gonna stack the boxes. Typically I'd wait and do this when I got home. But since we have another colony to remove, we're gonna go ahead and get these bees back on the brood. Now the entrance to the, to the brood chamber, the landing board is closed off with bead board for drywall. So it still allows some ventilation, but will not allow the bees to get out. For now, I'm not going to totally strap this thing down like I normally would because I wanted to ventilate here for a while since they're going to be trapped in there, so I don't want to close that screen. We'll just do it like this for now, and before we go home, we'll put the top on the way it's supposed to be on it. And strap it down. Okay, so that's good for now, and all I've got to do is slowly pull this out. Now those bees can move down on the brood, onto the queen, and onto the brood. Yep. Maybe Makes sense. we won't lose that much brood because of these cooler temperatures today. All right. So one down, one to go. Your turn. I hear you. <laughs> one down, one to go. Bruce's turn. So, uh, all right, we're probably gonna make two videos out of this. So, we'll go ahead and uh, close this one off for now. We'll go kind of maybe take a little quick break and then get started on the second one. All right, thanks, Rusty. Yeah, man. Hey, please subscribe if you will on the next video.